Imagine your favorite gamer is running a charity, and that charity uh, is for Alzheimer's, for example, or maybe a cause that is near and dear to your heart. They start their own charity in the name of a, a family member of their own that passed away from the disease, and everything feels good. The charity runs for going on 10 years with yearly fundraisers uh, where gaming community members and big sponsors get together and money is raised. Many years, well, over $100,000. Imagine you donated to this several times over the years. And then you found out that that money never made it to the charity that you expected it to. And then it just sat in the bank account of the organization that uh, you were donating to. I think you'd be pretty upset. And that's the exact scenario we're seeing now with former G4 TV and popular YouTuber, The Completionist, uh, as he's currently under massive amounts of fire after an expose from some ordinary gamers and Carl Jobs with some pretty rough uh, evidence that uh, at minimum of mismanagement, but several other things that look that are ripe I should say, ripe for uh, very some tough questions. Let's get into it. No good deed goes unpunished, it would appear, as according to some excellent work by Mudahar at Some Ordinary Gamers and others, uh, Carl Jobst, I believe, if I'm pro pronouncing that correctly. It looks like former G4 TV uh, employee and, uh, well, popular YouTuber, the Completionist has some very suspicious activity around a charity that has raised somewhere about uh, in north of $650,000 for Alzheimer's. Now, I want to highly recommend both of their videos. Um, if you've seen that, you know, if you haven't watched mine or if you haven't watched them, watch them. They did all the heavy leg lifting and, and leg work. But um, this is really disappointing to see. The 30,000 foot view of this is that it would appear that uh, the completionist who has you know many 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 youtube viewers and youtube followers has been raising money for a various you know for alzheimer's for charity for a long time and it turns out none of that money has been donated to any charity Save. now i think it's an important distinction Here's where all the, the issues are. This is a charity that's been around for um, several years. And every year, he gets together with other gamers and game streamers to raise money for, uh, well, Alzheimer's. And over the years, they've started to raise a pretty significant amount of money over the past couple of years, most years reaching north of $100,000. And uh, it turns out all of this money is still just sitting in the bank account of this charity. Now, when asked why this money is sitting in the charity or in the bank account, the completionist offers what I consider a pretty suspicious answer. And that is that they just haven't found the right charity yet. And they wanted to make sure it was a big giant donation that they made. Um, and rather than, you know, essentially, you know, especially early on in their fundraising, it looks like they've been fundraising for about almost 10 years. They would raise like twenty, thirty thousand dollars, and they wanted to sit on that and hold it and make sure that uh, you know they found the right charity so they could really make a splash. Well, it's been many, many years and many hundreds of thousands of dollars, and not a single penny has made it to any charity. Now, I should be, I should be clear that the money has not been spent, according to Gerard from the Completionist. He is, uh, he is not again. Deserto misleadingly writes. YouTuber completionist, completionist is being called up for allegedly pocketing charity funds. He's not, I'd, he hasn't been necessarily called up for pocketing charity funds. It's just that his organization, the Opening Open Hand for, uh, Foundation, uh, hasn't actually passed any of this money on. So for people that have donated to charity for many, many times over the years, or many times over the years, they would have thought that money had been paid forward, but it turns out incorrect they have not including some very suspicious uh information on tax filings which we're going to talk about too quick reminder uh we have launched it is gift box season at coffeebrandcoffee.com promo code early bird will save you 10 percent off 
We've got two different awesome pre-builts, which have raspberry yogurt pretzel twists, um, chocolate-covered espresso beans, sea salt caramel, and our medium roast coffee. We also have a bigger one, which has our kettle corn and uh, hot cocoa, peppermint hot cocoa. And you can also pre-build or customize yours. Choose up the six items from our snacks, coffee, tea, or cocoa. Get your Christmas shopping done today. Now, I want to, again, give all credit where credit is due. The, the most shocking parts of this were first during Mudahar's investigation. This charity began in 2015, and we have the most recent information we have was 2022. It listed as expenses each year, $28,000 in 2015, $11,000 um, $11, in 2017, a ballooned up to $29,906 in 2021. The problem is these are simply listed as, quote, expenses on their tax forms, and they're not itemized. So you don't know how that money's being spent. So over from 2015 through last year, the organization had expenses of $125,395, and nobody has any idea where that money went. And I'm not saying that that, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's nefarious, right, or that it has any kind of negative thing, but this charity spent 125 or 100, whatever, over 100K over the past few years on quote unquote expenses. When I have expenses, for example, they get itemized. So I have web design, I have coding, I have graphic design and video editing. I have um, travel. I have, um, you know, set decorations. I have giveaway stuff. I have staff payments, you know, stuff like that. And when I file my taxes, it's all completely itemized. Well, this particular charity, which as you can see now has a book value of $655,520. Again, there is nothing, no reason to believe that they do not at least have this money that people donated less than $125,000 in suspicious donations. But the question is, what are these expenses? They're filing these simplified tax forms and it just says expense, $13,000. So essentially, this charity has been raising hundreds of thousands of dollars to the total of $655,000 as of last year and has passed absolutely none of it onto the various charities involved. And that's the, that's the, that's the most concerning part about this is, you know, in Mudahar's video, he points out that, again, every year they've paid zero contributions. But then, for example, like this year, it says total expenses and disbursements, $28,000. So you had $28,000 in costs, but nobody knows what that is. Was everyone taking a $5,000 cut for quote unquote administrative fees? Were these actual costs of maintaining a charity that does nothing? Was this web hosting for hosting your charity website? What was this? It turns out that also a certain percentage of this money from open hand went directly into the charity event that he hosts uh, to pay for various expenses. Now, again, of all of the, how do I say, of all of the terrible things that, you know, charity fraud, if that's, you know, if, that, if that's what you want to go and you want to call, I think this is more like charity mismanagement, you know, um, you know, very, very odd. So essentially, here is a clip from some more Nears game. I'm not going to play the clip. You should watch his video. But IndieLand is basically this like fundraising event that happens every year to raise money. So when people donated the money, they thought, sure, well, why wouldn't it be going? And the website itself, Open Hands, seems to um, indicate at least somewhat that they are donating money, that they have relationships with these organizations. Oh, by the way, the organization, the 5013C, was created by the completionist. So this isn't a case where you have like a YouTuber who's like in over their head or whatever the case is. The completionist started the charity, took 600, over 655,000, uh, probably over $800,000 in total in, wrote off $125,000 roughly in quote-unquote expenses, never itemized what they are. Now, that does not mean 
that they're nefarious. They might really be expenses with running this charity. I mean, you have to pay an accountant probably. You have the website, you have payment processor payments. You have maybe graphic design, development, advertising. All these things could be completely you know, above board, okay? We don't know. But a good business who does their taxes generally has to itemize all that kind of stuff. Essentially, what's going to happen is he is cruising for an audit. You can't claim year after year after year, 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars in quote unquote expenses and not itemize them. That is perhaps the most sussy part of this. And in, in Mudhar's video, which I recommend again that you listen to, he, they have conversations with Gerard or Jared or whatever from the completionist. And you can see he's getting ab absolutely crushed in the replies. I'm absolutely shocked to find out that Gerard has been storing donations for 10 years at this point. What an absolutely horrible thing to do. I've watched you for many years, ever since I was in my teenage years. I've watched and loved so many of your videos, and I can't believe that you're this terrible of a pers person. Now, again, I don't, I don't know. I'm not going to call him a terrible person. Perhaps a terrible manager of charity funds. I don't know. I mean, I think the, I think certainly you look at a situation where, um, you have the, how do I say like, it's pretty obvious that people thought that money was going to help people and it never did. Obviously, you can see also the backlash has started. Already lost 10,000 subs. Probably is going to lose another 10 or 20,000, almost certainly. Now, this is a channel that has been, sh you know, shrinking for the most part. But, you know, again, it sucks because this is a charity thing. You want to, you know, not, you want people to get help. So if you donate the money, if I say I'm gathering funds, okay, I'm gathering funds for the Humane Society and you all give me money. And then I sit on it for 10 years. I donate and donate and donate and donate and you donate and donate. And for 10 years, I just keep sitting on your money. You'd be pissed, right? And you'd come to me and be like, why didn't you donate it? And then if the best I could come up with is, well, I wanted to wait till it was a lot of money or I wanted to find the right charity and really make a big difference. I mean, it's been almost a decade, bro. Break off a hundred, you know, they could have very easily broken off a quarter million dollars or they could have donated $100,000 to six different charities and still have operating funds left, $50,000 in their account. Um, not good. You know, a lot of the comments, imagine the panic this guy's having right now. Damn, Gerard, you're like one of the two YouTubers I regularly follow and watch. You let us down. You let a lot of people down. Again, here, I donated a very large amount a few years ago. A few years ago, and now I'm completely heartbroken at what Gerard has done. It hurts. My father could have greatly benefited from the research that funding could have provided. Instead, he died having forgotten his friends and most of his family and forgot even parts of his past. Scum is the word that it would describe it again. He admits in the call to not having donated the money, but again, it's not like he kept it for himself. So I don't know why he didn't donate that. I don't know. It's very, very weird. Um, and the internet's going to do what the internet's going to do. And this is going to end up very badly for the completionist. And, uh, you know, I highly recommend he just donate the money immediately because he might need to leave some money behind because he's almost certainly going to get audited after this.